you know, there's a difference between ego goals and spirit goals, a good idea and a God idea, right? The good idea is, you know, you're, you're, you're creating, you're doing good things, you're a do-gooder. But the God idea is you're doing that thing that you were meant to do out of love. One of my hacks is if this was the last video that I ever create, what am I going to say? And when I do this uh, practice, what comes out is not something to get, you know, a million likes. It's something that really has a deep message and hopefully will get a million likes as well. But it's more balanced. It's not as, as ego heavy. Yeah. Well, I certainly feel the love piece is so important in all of this because when you look at it from a place of abundance, I know the apps try to create this competitive nature, Mm -hmm. but there are so many people who are creating a platform of impact and living their life on their journey. And when you express love Mm -hmm. for someone who might feel a little further ahead than you, Mm -hmm. who might have accomplished something, maybe they Mm -hmm. got more views and likes, Mm -hmm. I think that puts me at a better reference point. So there's the self-love mm-hmm. of like, I love what I'm working on. I love the impact that I'm making. And mm-hmm. I also love that that person is doing amazing things in their life on their mm-hmm. journey and shifting mm-hmm. that perspective away from being in battle with one another. Mm, that's it. That's it. More of a collaborative than a competitive nature. I think you can't be, when you, when you stand too close to the painting, you can't see the picture. Right. When you stand too close to the painting, you can't see the picture for what it is. So, you know, a lot of people, I think, in our world have this thing about time, real hang ups about time. But you got to trust. I think there's a I think there's a trust and a surrender that you are exactly where you're meant to be right here, right now, that all is well and unfolding as it should. And, you know, if you know, no gardener that I know would have success if, you know, they planted a seed and they saw it growing a little bit and then they tried to pull it up, say, grow faster, hurry up. Nah, you're going to destroy your whole patch like that. So you got to trust and you got to just keep watering that seed. And sometimes the, you know, the flame that burns the brightest, you know, dies the quickest. (laughs) So you got to, you got to trust your, your timing. Now, the flip side of that is when you pour everything into a piece of content, when it's had a great impact on you, Mm but the seed doesn't germinate mm. and it, it doesn't resonate for whatever reason, or it doesn't have the impact that you had hoped. Mm. And there's that bit of self-criticism that comes up. Mm. Like you, you felt so strongly that the audience or the, the mm. platform would resonate and it didn't. Mm. So yeah. How do you deal with those failures or setbacks or do you view them as failures or mm. setbacks as mm. you create? Mm. Yeah. You know, if there was a, I want to create a, uh, a dictionary and in this dictionary, I would, I would, I would put words that really exist. And failure is a word that I would not put in that dictionary because it doesn't exist. There's no such thing. It's experimenting. It's testing, right? So when I create something that might not go as far and wide, I say, okay. I I look at it with a curious mind. Like, okay, interesting. Okay, what can I do differently? And let's try it on the next, next, you know, next go. For me, it's just data. It's just testing. You know, I mean, that's right. That's the way to to really get the most out of those experiences is to really use it for the next iteration. As simple as that. So evolve the message. Yeah, a hundred percent. Some people that I've worked with, they can get caught into traps, and even I can get caught into the trap of blaming. Oh man, that's so stupid. How can they not like this video? That doesn't do anybody any good. Oh man, the algorithm. No, nah, man, the F the algorithm, algorithm yeah. you know. That's that's disempowering. For me, I just I just take it as a lesson. Okay, let's 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 not do something that we did in that time and do something different in the next one. You know, so we we grow from it, or as you said, we evolve the message. Yeah. I think in creating in the creative process, there's the trust. And there's the patience piece, watering the garden. Mm. And it's very easy to look at other people in that snapshot and see their success and Mm. not see all the work Mm. that got them there. Oftentimes it's not even posted. It's not even talked about. It's Mm. there's those minutes of fame that they get. Mm. And then, of course, the comparison starts. Mm. But what is your perspective on being patient and watering that garden? And Mm. for those who are thinking about entering the creative space or who are struggling in their career right now with impatience 
and the pain and suffering that causes. How do you bring patience into your life? Mm, I think, you know, somebody said he or she who experiments the most wins. You know, I'm a big fitness advocate. And they say he or she who does the most reps looks the best. Right. So it's, it's the repetitions. It's the it's the times that you experiment with what you're doing that you, that gets you closer to where you want to go. You're learning. You're, you're becoming more durable. Uh, you're, you're building. And also, you know, success too fast can be a curse. Man, they say don't be too good at something you hate or they'll make you do it for the rest of your life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you got to look within the self to, to make sure you're in alignment uh, with what you're doing truly. That's the first step because, listen, I meet a lot of creators that are successful. Hey, YouTube, how you doing? It's a beautiful day. And you meet them behind the scenes. They just, their face, man, they, it's just down. They're the sad. They're, they're addicted to social media and they're addicted to the numbers. And that's, that's, I would never want to switch places with them. I mean, no disrespect, but first it's important to really walk the talk to live it, to be the message that you want to see in the world, to be it, to be the message. Don't just, don't just speak it, be it. That's the hardest. That's always been historically, that's always been the hardest thing to really live it. So I think when you are living it, you adopt a, first of all, it, things become easier. You love it. The repetitions, the reps are fun. It's play. It's not a job, it's play. And ultimately, you're you're doing it for a for a bigger reason than just yourself. This has always helped me because I think I think there's an issue in our social media culture uh, around artistic integrity. And I think as an artist, you got two choices: you can either uh, free people, or you can dig them deeper into their illusions. I never wanted to be the latter. I always wanted to to try to free people. And if that's your goal, if that's your mission, then whether you get 200 views or 200 million views, and I've gotten both of them, you look at them equally and you look at them as, okay, what can I learn and what can I do better? Even when you get to that 200 million point, you're like, okay, what can I do better on? You know, you're never happy. You're satisfied, but it, you're, not ha you're not necessarily happy. You're content, but it's not like, oh man, I made it. You're just always trying to figure out, learn, and grow.